For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Welcome to a communion service here at the Capitol Hill, Seventh-day Adventist Church. We praise God that you are joining us virtually. And if you're on your way, we are praying for safe travels. Today, we have a special message message of hope and restoration. We pray that on behalf of the senior, our senior pastor, Dr. Emil Peeler, our assistant pastor, Elijah Stanley, and I'm your associate pastor, Dr. Philip Wesley, we pray that your experience will bring you closer to God, will bring you closer to the journey in this kingdom. We pray that you have an awesome worship experience God bless you as we get to the kingdom.
The Bible says that I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. Is anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord? The Bible also says that this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you're excited to be in the house of the Lord, can you stand to your feet and put your hands together and praise the God that brought us through another week? I feel like that's an all right praise. Can you just put your hands together and shout out hallelujah? Can someone shout out praise the Lord? God has been too good for us to be sitting down. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Someone has to stomp their feet, put their hands in the air and say, praise God for bringing me through another week. We want to welcome you to Capitol Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church where kindness is intentional. If you're watching online, we're going to pray and get right into our worship. God, I am asking God after a long week that your presence, God, calm our souls. God, I am praying that your grace and your peace, God, fill this place. God, I know that there are people here that I've come to encounter you, God, because they need a word from you, God. They, they want to praise you, God, and, and they're asking you to deliver them. So I'm praying for these next few moments as we prioritize you, that your spirit, God, not leave us just convicted but transformed. And God, let us leave here, God, knowing that we have encountered you new and afresh. This is my prayer. In your name I pray. And the church said, amen. 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 Please remain standing. We're going to have our Capitol Hill statement of identity, and we're all going to say it together. Let's all say it together. We, the Capitol Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church, are a grace-filled community of faith whose goal is to continually grow into the image of Christ. We are committed to being immersed in scripture, constant in prayer, joyful in worship, generous in giving, and committed to serving those who are in need of a touch from God. Please remain standing. Capitol Hill, we worship together with our hymns during our communion service, amen? And we begin, we begin, we begin with hymn number 520 in our Seventh-day Adventist hymnal, 520, He Hideth My Soul. me 
our three pastors, Dr. Emil Pillier, our senior pastor, Dr. Philip Wesley, our, the second, our associate pastor, and Elijah Stanley, our assistant pastor. Welcome. Do we have any guests in the house tonight, today? Any guests, raise your hands. Well, welcome, and God bless y'all, and thank y'all for coming to worship with us this Holy Communion. God bless everyone, and happy Sabbath to y'all. Good morning, good morning. Again, we want to extend that welcome again on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Emil Peeler, our associate pastor, Dr. Philip and Wesley, and on behalf of myself, welcome, welcome again to the Capitol Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church where kindness is intentional. Doc, can we be intentional just for a moment this morning? Yes. Uh, can you just turn to the person next to you and say, I am happy that you came out today. I'm happy you came out today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome, 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 out. welcome. We are excited. We are excited. Today, today is communion. Today is communion. As you can tell, we are excited because, Doc, we are going to be celebrating today uh, uh, the resurrection and the life that was given yes. for us to enjoy, not just today, but, but make sure that our future destination is secure. That's right. So we are so excited that we are able to share this with each other as believers. Doc, today is special because it is not only our communion, but we are, are sharing today uh, with uh, someone that our Capitol Hill family knows very well. Um, uh, now, Pastor Michael J. Cox, the, the pastor of Cambridge SDA Church. Uh, uh, they are yeah. here as well. If you're from Cambridge, can you just put your hands together so we can just identify you? We praise God for Amen. you. Thank you for joining us today. Today we are going to be an encouraging. Faith, 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 faith SDA. I apologize. Faith, faith SDA. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Faith SDA. We are so encouraged because we are, we are together today as two congregations praising God. Yes. Dr. Wesley, uh, I know that here at Capitol Hill we have a lot of things going on. We have uh, not just meetings on Sabbaths, but we're, we're, we're meeting on Monday morning, we're meeting all throughout the week. Are there some more things that we should be aware of? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, as we meet, we have opportunities to pray. And uh, this week, we have just been praying for a lot of our members that have been dealing with losses, losses. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we want to just uh, let you know we're praying for our uh, head deacon, Robin Sampson, as he has lost his brother, uh, Wayne Sampson, Wayne Sampson, uh, more details are forthcoming, but we want to lift up our deacon in prayer, Robin Sampson and his family. Yes, sir. We are, are praying for you. Uh, once again, we surround Dr. Shirley Johnson, who funeralized her niece, uh, Shaklia Sh uh, Bland, this week, and also Shantiki Powell, who funeralized her uncle, John Juan P Don P Don, John Powell, mm -hmm. and also Jean Marie Watson, who funeralized her sister-in-law, Arlene Dean, this week. And so we continue to lift up uh, these families, and you never know, just, just even silently, just pray for your neighbor. Yes, sir. You don't know what they're going through. Yes, sir. You don't know what they're dealing with, but silently, just say a prayer for your neighbor, the one you're sitting next to. And pray healing and prosperity over their life, that the Spirit of God will cover them as we journey to this kingdom. And for those who are just in need of that prayer of healing, just know we're praying for you today. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Doc, you know, uh, talking about getting to, uh, uh, to, to get to know our neighbors and praying over them, we have a chance to actually meet some of our neighbors over dinner, over lunch, and uh, we are excited because uh, guess who's coming to dinner is coming back on May 4th. It'll be back on May 4th, and you can sign up right now either as a guest or a host. If you don't know what guess who's coming to dinner is, this is something that our, our church has been doing for a while, and the whole point of it is that we get to meet other uh, members in our church over some lunch after our Sabbath service. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that you hear it in advance so that you can get on the list either as a host or a guest, and you can email family at capitalhillsdachurch.org, and you can get on that list. Doc, I know that uh, uh, I think you hosted last time, right? 
No, I was visiting, and you I'm going to visit again. I'm very excited. <laughs> very excited. Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, Doc, you know, uh, actually, uh, today is also someone's birthday. That's right. That's right. So we want to uh, continue to celebrate all birthdays of April. Yes, sir. And uh, we are celebrating our deaconess birthday, Sister Barbara Stewart. Happy birthday. Yes, indeed. Wow. 35 looks good on you. Amen. 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 Looks good on you. Amen. 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 Praise God. And, Amen. And we just celebrate everyone with birthdays. Yes, sir. And, and we have another one, right? And, no, sir. Uh, uh, well, uh, not that I'm aware of, Doc. Okay, but, okay. But. We have more, but we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> it some more. We'll talk about it some more. Uh, also, as we are talking about ministries that we have, we have the older adult ministry and uh, they are hosting a Zoom presentation on uh, Department of Aging and Community Living Resources for D.C. residents uh, age 60 and older, including adults with disabilities and their caregivers. Join us uh, on Zoom. That is uh, April 8, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The presenter is Alice Thompson, Community Outreach Specialist, Department of Aging and Community Living. The Zoom link is on your screen and in your newsletter. So uh, if you have not signed up for your newsletter, please make sure that you do that. And uh, we, we are excited for that. Um, one thing about life is that God continues to uh, give us birth, mm -hmm. give us life. And it is our privilege to celebrate life and also bless young lives because children are a heritage from the Lord. Amen. So we are going to invite uh, George Thornton Jr. and Christina Thornton and also we want to bless Aura Joy. Todd Thornton as well. Aura Joy is complete, is the named after her maternal grandmother Aura is named after maternal grandmother, and Joy is the name of Christina. It was called by her grandmother, Aura. So we are just celebrating this, and we're inviting the family to come forward right now. Amen. 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 Let's, Amen. let's celebrate Joy in the house. Family, if you can just go up that first stair and wrap around them. You go up this first stair. Yes. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Love the Lord, everybody shout amen. Amen. Our, our family is getting bigger and bigger. And it's from baptismal growth, but, but also biological growth. Christina and J.R. George Jr., we are honored today, along with your mother and your mother along with your, her grandmother, great-grandmother. I feel the love. I feel the energy. I feel that God is, as we speak today, restoring what the enemy tried to take away. 
And I want you to know it is with a honor. We, as the pastors of the Capitol Hill Church, we are celebrating the fact. Boy, that's a pretty baby. Come on and say <laughs> that there. Oh. Aura, joy is so precious. Nine months. And I want you to know that she is surrounded by a lot of love. And, and, and Christina and George were proud of you. When we spoke together, one of the things that just absolutely just heartened me is that you, Christina, you, George, said that, first of all, you, you wanted to make sure that your lives were connected to Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that, that this is the newest and finest couple of Capitol Hill. So Amen. let's give God the glory for their celebration. And then, George, you said that, that you want to be the best model and father of godliness to your child. And you said together that you wanted to present your baby or a joy in the presence of God back to God who has given her to you on loan, on loan. And so today, we want to greet the family and the friends, and we want to say that we are so excited that we're a part of this great, great gift of dedicating or a joy back. And we want you to know that we want to embrace the role of parenthood because it is going to be a journey. Yeah, yeah. But with God, it will be a successful journey. So I want you to embrace the role of parenthood, JR, Christina. Embrace it with, with love, with patience and with faith. And let me tell you about the power of prayer. Because prayer changes things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And prayer changes people. Now, Aura Joy, she is nine months old, but she's going to go through those terrible twos. And she's going to go through adolescence. And you're going to be the greatest thing in the world during those early years. But when she's about 13, 14, she's going to act like she don't know you. <laughs> but never give up on the power of prayer. Never give up on the community and support. Because this is your family. This is... We cannot raise children these days without a village. And... Whatever you do, Capitol Hill, continue to pray for each other because every family literally is going to go through some trials and some triumphs, some, some rough spots, and, and you can laugh and you can talk and you can gossip about when other people go through their situations, but the fact of the matter is life is cyclical. Today might be their day. But tomorrow will be your day. So it, it just behooves us to pray for one another. So I just want you to understand that I want to stress the importance of community and support. And I thank you, this, this conglomerate of friends and family, as well as your extended family of faith. I thank you for trusting us as we follow God to help you grow your child in the admonition of the Lord. And so today, my challenge to you, Christina, my challenge to you, JR, is to continue to deepen your faith in God. Don't sin or a joy to church. Bring her to church. Yes. Don't tell her to read her Bible. Let her see you read your Bible. Don't just say, act in a godly way. Let her manifest godliness in your own lifestyle. And when you do that, you will present before her a godly model. I thank 
God today for not only you as parents, but you as grandparents and you as a great grandparent and you as brothers and sisters and cousins and, and loved ones. You all have the opportunity and the obligation to live your lives holy. Because you know why? The only God or a joy will know is the God that she sees in you and in me. So let us be steadfast, unmovable, faithful until Jesus comes. And whatever you do, learn, 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 learn how to count. Count your blessings instead of your crosses. Count your gains instead of your losses. Count your ups instead of your downs. Count your smiles instead of your frowns. Count your, the good deeds instead of the mean. Count the full years instead of the lean. Count your health instead of your wealth. But most of all, count on God instead of yourself. And when you do that, or a joy, as well as everyone here, will be ready when the saints go marching in. Amen. Can everybody just stretch forth their hands as Pastor Elijah Stanley prays a prayer of dedication. God, today we are excited because parents have chosen to follow the biblical example, God, of bringing back the gifts that you have given them, God. And God, today we are asking that your Holy Spirit, God, continue what it has started in their life. God, you brought them together and you gave them aura, God. And we know that she is created on purpose, God, for a purpose. So God, I'm praying that every day that she lives her life, God, your angels will surround her, your Holy Spirit, God, will live within her. And I'm praying, God, that with her hands, God, you will continue to bless and let them make abundant things, God. I I pray for her mind, God. Bless her with divine wisdom, God, and intelligence as she grows, God. God, be with her feet. May, may, it, may it go into the path, God, that you have already prepared for her, God. God, I'm praying with her heart, God. I'm praying that you will keep it, God. And God, I'm praying for her eyes, God. When she looks into the world, that she will see your goodness, God, and your glory. God, I'm praying for the family around her, God. God, I'm praying that you will give them the words to say when Aura is sad, God, when, 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 o, when, when, when she is depressed, God. I'm praying that you will give them the words of encouragement that will lift her up, God. And God, when she is in need of solid advice, God, I'm praying that she will hear the words, God, that will draw her closer to you, God, and benefit her life. So I'm praying right now, God, as we bless her, God, that we pray a prayer of blessing over her family, God, and her parents, God. Keep them, God, for they need your help in growing Aura into who you have made her to be. And God, when she is ready, God, may our church be ready, God, to grow her in her faith as well. And when she needs that pillar, God, she will find, God, that strength and that support here, God, at Capitol Hill. Be her firm foundation, God. Be her cleft in the rock. Be her anchor in the storm of life because she has no one else to hold on to but you. We're asking all these things in your, your name I pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Good afternoon, Christina and George. On behalf of Capitol Hill Church, we have a gift bag for Aura Joy. It contains your certificate to commemorate today, a soft toy, and a Bible. God bless you all on your special gift, Aura. Well, I just want to thank everybody for supporting us and everything like that. And if you see Ordo, just smile. <laughs> just smile back. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you, Pastor. I just want to thank um, Pastor Peeler and my family and friends for coming out um, and the church as well. Um, we just thank you all. It's a blessing. Um, that's, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> May God bless you all. We love you, we're here for you, and thank you for being wise enough to give God what he has given you. In Jesus' name, let everybody shout out, amen.
Good morning, church. It is prayer time. And I think it's a wonderful transition for prayer right now, especially on this holy day of communion. If you were here last week, it was a high day for worship as we talked about the seven last words of Christ. Now we are going into our communion service. It is an opportunity for each and every one of us to set aside our differences, our ills, our worries, and come humbly at the feet of Jesus Christ. And doing so in the sight and vision of our church members. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to assume a posture of prayer as we seek the Lord's presence at this time. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of prayer. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for this holy day of communion and what it represents. We not only want to thank you, dear Lord, for our church members who are here presently, but also for those members and visitors, dear Lord, who are viewing online. We pray, dear Father, that if they have an urgent request, dear Lord, they can see the number on the screen, dear Lord, and know that somebody will pick up the phone and take their request and pray with them. We thank you, dear Lord, for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We look at this church, dear Father, and I'm glad to say that we look good, we look prosperous, and we're not afraid, dear Lord, to tell people how good you have been. Before we ask for anything, dear Lord, we want to thank you, dear Lord, for our jobs. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for the benefits that come with our jobs. We want to thank you for our families that are together and whole. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for single parents, dear Lord, that continue to come and bring their children, dear, dear Lord. We want to thank you, merciful God, for our pastoral team, dear Father. They have combined talents and gifts, dear Lord, to minister to the various demographics within our church. And we want to give you praise, honor, and glory. We as a Capitol Hill Church are truly blessed. Merciful God, we want to thank you, dear Lord, for all of the ministries within this church. There are over 33 different ministries in this church, and they cater to the spiritual needs of our church and our community. So we thank you, dear Lord, for those ministerial leaders, dear Lord, that sacrifice their time to give back, dear Lord, to our church and community through ministry. Merciful God, we pray, dear Lord, for our sick and shut in. We also pray, dear Lord, for those who have lost loved ones. There's no better place, dear Lord, to lose a loved one than here at this church because what we do is we embrace those who are hurting. We lift up Brother Robin Sampson, dear Lord, in the loss of his brother. We lift, lift up Dr. Shirley, dear Lord, in the loss of her niece. And we lift up others, dear Father, whose names I do not have, dear Father, but there are others who have lost loved ones, dear Father. Let us remember, dear Father, to minister to them in their time of need. Not only now, but further down the road, dear Lord, when they are still grieving. We thank you, merciful God, for that ministry. Now today, dear Lord, in this holy day of communion, we want to thank you, dear Lord, for our pastor, dear Lord, that will deliver the word today. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for his preparation. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for his dedication. And we just want to give you praise, honor, and glory. Merciful God, we also pray, dear Lord, that if there are any issues, dear Lord, that we are dealing with as a church family, that we will remember, dear Lord, to bring it to the foot of the cross and to leave it there. Help us to remember, dear Lord, that after this prayer, we should look radiant. We should be 
radiant, dear Father. We should, should be uplifted. We should be fulfilled, dear Father. And that is because your word will not come back void. So we pray, dear Lord, for those who are suffering in any kind of way, dear Lord. Those who are in need of a job. Those who are, are, are in need of some kind of healing. Those who are in need of, who are going through some kind of a crisis, dear Lord. Those that need an extra touch, dear Lord. Let us be sensitive. Let us be caring. And let us be loving. Merciful God, we thank you, dear Lord, for the baby dedication today. Let that family know, dear Father, that they are now a part of a bigger family. We are all the parents of this child. We are all watching this child and caring for this child. They are not alone because uniquely, dear Lord, we are a church family. So we thank you. We pause to give you praise. We pause to give you honor. We pause to give you glory. Worthy is your name to be praised. Amen. Amen.
Let's give God the glory for Kenethia once again. Come on. We could do better than that. Oh. Excellently done. Excellently done and ministered. And excellently uh, accompanied by Dr. Lloyd Mallory, Jr. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to welcome again uh, our friends uh, all the way from Cambridge and our elder and their pastor, Pastor Michael J. Cox, the volunteer pastor of Cambridge. Come on, let's get... Come on, we could do better than that. 30 years he has serviced us. And uh, he wanted uh, several of his congregation to come, about 20 of them, uh, and they drove all the way here, hour and a half, so they could experience one of our communions. And uh, it's a good thing. So can your church please stand, the ones who are here today? Come on, let's give it up. Oh, we could do better than that. Yeah. And First Lady Zira. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being our guest today. And I hope you have a wonderful experience as we celebrate Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for, for journeying with us. God bless you. Uh, and Sister Stewart, your birthday. You turn 43. Come on. Am I right or wrong? Come on and say amen out there. No, God bless you. Thank you. 
Thank you for being a leader of our deaconesses. And she does it with excellence. And she does it with youthfulness. She does it with energy. And I want you to know you are the best of what Capitol Hill is about. And I thank God for you. Come on, let's give it up again for our head deaconess. Amen, amen. God bless you. Thank God for you. We're, we're also just so grateful that we are adding, those of you who did not know, Rachel and Carlin's Edmonds. Uh, we've been waiting for their baby to be born. The baby is born. And uh, six pounds, uh, little Carlton, after 37 hours of labor. Turn to your neighbor's neighbor. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. But he is here. Six pounds. So while they're watching on virtual space today, let's give it up for little baby Carlton and the parents, and the parents, Rachel and Carlin Edmonds. We're looking forward for you to join uh, with us when you can, when you can. After about four or five weeks, we're looking forward to you. And then uh, about six months, we're going to bless another baby. Now, we're going to bless another baby next week, and we're going to bless another baby the next week. So y'all keep on having babies. Come on and say them out there. And, and we're going we're gonna to continue to grow by the grace of God, by the grace of God. Let's get right into the Word, and I always say if it's not in the Word, it doesn't deserve to be heard, but it's in the book. What we're going to do? Yeah, we're going to take a look. Father, in the name of Jesus, for these next few moments, would you have your way in this place? We love you. We thank you. We praise God for you. And uh, if, if you would just speak to my heart and then speak to others' heart, I believe we're going to have a, a transformative day. I thank you in advance for how you're going to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is Michelle Wimbish here? I don't see her. Is Michelle? Oh, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right before I get into the Word of God, I was look. Where's Michelle? Oh, Michelle. Come on up. Come on up. You got something special to say because we want to celebrate not only a birthday, but I, I want you to know that, uh, uh, you know, uh, your mother, I know your mother is something special. Michelle's one of our new members. I've known Michelle for maybe 20 years, uh, and uh, her mother is one of uh, the, the great members of the DuPont Park Church when I pastored there, and so we're so grateful for her. And there is something that we would also want to celebrate. Uh, and so go ahead, Michelle. We just want to celebrate my mom, who is 94 years old. Yeah. Who... Oh, come on. If you make it to 94, you deserve not a sitting ovation, but a standing ovation. Yeah. And she's a woman of God. She's a woman of faith. Come on. We could do better than that. Yeah. And she's clean in that blue. <laughs> she's clean in that blue. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, little. Boy, I tell you, when nobody said amen, you said amen when I was at DuPont Park. Come on and say amen. Yeah, yeah. And she, hey, and she got a nice step. Come on and say amen. She got a you know, all right. And I just, you know, want to say that this is a true matriarch. This is a woman that raised 10 kids. It was never easy, but she did the best she could. She has 17 grandkids. She has 42 great grandkids. She has, she's a fifth generation. She has great, great grandkids that she's able to share the Lord with Amen. and to share her life with. Amen. Yes. This is the great woman that introduced me to Seven Day Adventist, the best choice I ever made in my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you got to give them flowers while they live in yes. And I just want you guys to know this is a beautiful woman. She has been to like 43 countries in the world, raising 10 kids, 
just a wonderful woman of God. And I just want to praise and thank God for my mother. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want you to know, I have to tell you this little example, what I did when I was 10 years old. Uh, my grandparents have a farm, the Johnson family, and I, you see my grandmother shouting at church. So I got up on the haystack, and I said, Lord, I want to see people of the other world. And let me tell you, he blessed me. I have been to so many countries, made so many different people, South Africa, everywhere, traveled. God heard my prayer, and I, when I got there, kept, never gave up the church, found a church somewhere to go. And it's, it's been a long time, but what I thought of best, no matter how many kids I had, we went to church. Uh -huh. They were raised in the church. Therefore, that's why they still staying in the church. Because you got to do it. From the babies like you bring your babies, don't fail to do it. And never forget that no matter what you're going through, God's got you. God's got you. And I just want to say thank you for having me to say this. And I've been knowing your wife, and she knows it. Uh -huh. Your parents, uh -huh. when they were on, what was that, Law Foot uh -huh. Avenue when you were living there? Mm -hmm. I've been through a whole lot, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. But I never forget them, and I never fail to stop to speak to them, even though they may not speak back, but I do it. Uh -huh. I do it. Yeah. And there's nothing God won't do for you. Uh, it's had the patience to wait. And raising 10 children, I had it. Amen. I had it. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Come once again. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, I want to be as cool and as sharp. Praise God. Come on, get your grand. Come on, come on, let's give God the glory. Ah, oh, amen, amen, amen. Give flowers while they're alive. Amen, amen. The title for the message today is... Uh, no more bad news. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, no more bad news. I, I really don't want to sound negative, but I'm getting sick and tired of all the negative talk going on in the world. Does anybody else feel that way? Anytime we turn on the news or read the news apps that are on our devices, it seems all that we encounter is bad news. People getting sick, people tragically dying, jobs are are vanishing. We got a good report yesterday, but the economy up and down, struggling, crime is out of control, nation divided, corruption is rampant. And it literally seems that the pervasive message in the world today, it just seems that we are just bombarded, Hazel, with, with news riff with just so much negativity. And the problem is, it's so easy for us to get sucked into that negativity. Negativity that sometimes brings fear and, and anxiety. And we walk around just all messed up half the time and because the negative news is, is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. 
And though I am a pastor of this great congregation, um, I, if I could just be transparent with you, there, there, there are so many times when I even find myself emotionally on edge. I find myself, you know, getting easily angry, all that negative stuff. I, I, I find myself more easily discouraged and often just kind of waking up feeling anxious. Why? Because so much negative news, bad news, and you, you just have this sometimes a sense of anxiety. So what, what I am doing right now, I'm just kind of helping you to see uh, how I'm trying to navigate. What I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm really, really, uh, Victor, I, I'm asking God to help me to see the good in the middle of all the bad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really being so transparent with you today because I, I, I am fighting to keep a perspective of faith and, and, and a very positive attitude in the midst of all the bad news. I, I myself, I'm praying to have an attitude of faith. To look for the good in the middle of the bad and, 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 and believe for myself that God is still on the throne. That, that he's still working. That, that he can be in this and with us and, and still for us. I'm fighting, church. I'm, I'm fighting to stay positive. I'm, I'm fighting for faith because, because I, I recognize, listen to me, I recognize a, a negative outlook never ever leads to a positive life. So what I want to do today is I want to show you uh, why I am becoming, I have not arrived yet, I am becoming more and more unshakably optimistic about the future. I'm, I'm not there yet. Now, now, now let's, let's talk about optimism, what optimism is. And, and what I want to do is, I, I, I want to first tell you what optimism is not, so we can be very crystal clear on this Sabbath afternoon. And then I want to help to try to, to define what optimism is. But I have to start with what Optimism is not. First of all, y'all, optimism is not a denial of reality. It's not putting our head in the sands and acting like everything's okay, nothing's wrong. Uh, 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 just, just have a stiff, stiff upper lip and, and, and just have a positive attitude no matter what. Uh, just deny reality. No, no. Uh, the reality is, y'all, that we have very significant challenges all over the world and even in our churches and even in our homes and even on our jobs. Optimism, let me be clear, is not, somebody shout out, not, uh, is not the denial of reality. But secondly, optimism is not blind faith. No, it's not blind. It's not just a, a naive, wishful thinking about everything's going to work out if we don't do anything about it. Just, it, it, it just, just, just have blind faith. It's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. No. So, so optimism is not a denial of reality, and it is not blind faith. Now, I, I looked up in the dictionary, and I found a good definition of what optimism is. Listen, optimism is simply confidence about the future or a successful outcome. Optimism, listen, is, is a confidence believing that something good is coming. Optimism 
is, is an assurance or a belief that there's going to be a positive or successful outcome. But what I want to do, I want to take it a little further. I want to add some spiritual weight to this definition of optimism. So this definition, my definition of optimism <clears throat> is, is for a believer, for somebody who has faith, somebody who has declared a relationship with Jesus Christ. What is optimism for a faith-filled believer? Watch this. Optimism is the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good. Ah, uh, y'all missed that. Uh, optimism, I'm talking about for y'all, it, it is the unwavering expectation. It is an, an assurance that is deep within our souls that our loving God is involved and he's working in every situation for our future good. In fact, it was Paul who said, this very thing in Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 28. And he says, and we know that in all things. Can, can somebody just shout out all things? Matter of fact, those in a virtual space, type that in the chat. All things. It might be your impossible boss. It might be a financial setback. It might be even your annoying in-laws. Now, now, don't nudge them if, if, they're, if, if, if they're sitting with you at the house watching this. So, but, 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 but you all know what I'm talking about. It, it, could, be, it, it could be the challenges uh, of trying to successfully raise your kids. It, 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 it can be a painful breakup in all things. Our God uh, works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. In other words, even in a negative situation, it still holds the potential to produce a positive purpose because we as faith-filled, twice-born believers uh, can live with the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good. So, so what I want you to think about, what you think about. Ah, oh, y'all missed that. I want you to just to spend some time this morning. I want you to think about how, your, that how you process your thoughts, especially about the future. How do you see the future in your thought life? Because the reality is, if your thoughts are always consumed with negativity and fear and worry and anxiety, that's really, really bad news. Because what consumes your mind tends to control your life. Mm, I wish you would hear me. Whatever you think about tends to direct your life. In other words, the life you have is generally reflection, is a reflection of the thoughts that you think. As a man thinketh, that's what Proverbs says, so is he. See, your life, I'm just trying to lay this thing down, your life, my life, it is generally moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Because what consumes your thoughts control your life. And that's why the quality of your life 
will never exceed the quality of your thoughts. So what do you think about? How do you think? Are you a pessimist? Are you an optimist? Because I have found, don't you miss next week, because, because, because being content, being satisfied, being blessed, being optimistic, it isn't a state of affairs, it's a state of the mind. Because what controls your mind controls your, your life. So, so what, what consumes your thoughts? I, I, I'm, I'm talking about everybody in the house. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about young people. I'm talking about teenagers. I'm talking about college students. Uh, uh, I, I want you to think about what you think about. What consumes your thoughts? Are, 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 are your thoughts typically drifting towards God and faith, or, or, or do they tend to drift toward the negative? Because I found that our op Optimism is based on a belief about how you see God. And, and, and I'm, I'm being transparent. If I, I, I could be very honest with you, because the way I think, I, I, I have to fight for an attitude of faith. Sometimes I'm good at it, but, but other times, I, I'm, I'm, see, I, by nature, I tend to be a realist. Two plus two equals four. So, so sometimes uh, I, I pray, and sometimes I, I have faith, and sometimes I'm pretty good at it, but, but sometimes my natural bent is, is when things are not adding up, I tend to be concerned. I, I tend to drift toward the negative. Uh, 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 that thing ain't looking too good. I, I, I'm concerned. I, I'm a little bit worried about this. That, that's my natural bent. And if you find yourself there... What you want to do is what I have began to, began to do. You want to, because somebody's going to get help today. You and I, we need to feed our faith and starve the negativity. We, we, we need to learn how to feed, listen, our faith and starve our fears. Why do I say this? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I say this because whatever you feed tends to grow. Am I right about it? But whatever you starve tends to die. So what we need to do in 2024, in the month of April, listen, we need to practice doing this. We need to starve the wrong voices that rob us of, our in, of any potential joy. And we need to learn how to feed the things that help us grow up in our faith. Uh, now, 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 that does not mean I put my head in the sand. Uh, uh, for, for me, watch this, let me give you a practical tip and we'll get spiritual. For me, uh, what I do to starve the fear is, I'm serious about this, I, I don't watch the news 24 hours a day. You want to you wanna, you wanna shoot yourself in the head? Keep on watching that mess. Oh! day long. It will, listen, 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 see, see, I, I, you know what I do? That I, I give myself an hour a day with that. You know what I'm talking about with that negative talk. See, one, one hour a day. I, I, I'm in focus for 30 minutes a day, hour a day, and then I'm out. If, if I got some See, whenever I have negative voices, the news all around, I don't care if it's CNN, uh, I don't care if it's Fox, I don't watch Fox, I, I don't care, I don't care, I, I don't, uh, did I say that, did I say that? Uh, uh, but all of it is negative. I got to dis distance myself, uh, and when I distance myself with all the negative talk, what I'm doing, I'm starving my fears. 
You got to learn how to drown out the noise of negativity. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to feed the things that build my faith. And, and I'm just going to show you one way how I feed my faith and how I try to build my own faith out. Now, one of the most valuable things that I do is I take, take a, I'm so thankful for the Word of God, I'm telling you, I, I take a, 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 a pericope, that's a, a rich portion of Scripture, and I begin to walk through the, the scriptural neighborhood, literally, in my mind as I, I, I try to get into Scripture so that Scripture gets into me. I, I, I don't just read it. I, I don't just, you know, read through it. But, but, but I'm, I'm literally walking through. I'm trying to live in that Scripture. I, I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to let it work and start to renew my mind. Now, let me give you an example. And since we've already started talking about uh, Romans 8, 21, uh, 28, the, 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 the power of God that works in good thing in good things so so i'm going to show you how i go through like romans 8 in order to feed my faith uh huh. I, I take a portion of Scripture, and first of all, I, I want to understand the context. Listen, y'all, you, you, you're going to need to listen to this over and over again. It's going to help somebody. Uh, first of all, how I get it, because I'm giving you an example of how I feed my faith. I, 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 I begin to open up a Scripture like Romans, and I want to understand the context. I'm not just reading it, but I want to know who wrote it, to whom it was written, why it was written, what's going on before the verses. I'm reading. I'm trying to get the context. And, and, and so I know that the Apostle Paul was writing a very, very meaty, weighty letter to the Romans. I know that Romans 8 comes after Romans 7. So I begin to think about Romans 7. And in Romans 7, I love Romans 7 because Paul was just totally a mess. And let me give you, <laughs> let me give you another confession. It, it, it makes me feel better about me. Whenever someone who's as spiritual as Paul is, he, it makes me feel better. But if, if Paul can lose it, it makes me feel better whenever I lose it. And in Romans 7, 15, he, he's literally going on a rant like, I, I don't understand myself. I, I don't understand me. I'm so messed up. I'm jacked up. The, the, the things I want to do, I, I don't do them. And the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. I, I end up doing those things. Paul is literally saying, I'm such a mess. And then he shifts to Romans 8 in verse 1. And it's almost like he's taking talking himself out of his negativity and his dysfunction and his sinfulness because in the very beginning uh, he says therefore now there is no condemnation for those uh, who are in Jesus Christ did you know that if you're in Christ there's no judgment for your sins uh, your sins have been forgiven uh, and, and and so it's kind of like Paul is making this hard turn as he starts to renew his mind, his mind, his mind. And he talks about the mind that focuses on the flesh, that mind that thinks about the things of the flesh. He warns us if you always think about fleshly things, you begin to live for things of the flesh. But then he says, but, 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 but y'all, the mind that's focusing on the spirit and spiritual things, you will begin to live in the spirit. He says, if you're being led in your mind by the spirit, you're literally, Paul says, you're a child of God and your mind will be at peace. And then I might just land in the portion of the text, uh, Romans 8, 18, where this is what Paul says. He says, listen, he says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. And, and I'm, I'm just 
I'm just going to stop there and just read it. I, I'm, going to, I'm just going to read it again, and, and then I'm going to let it read me. I, I, I need to feel this text when he says, I, I consider that our present sufferings, all these things that we hate, that we're enduring, that are so incredibly painful, our present sufferings, they're, they're not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. So, so I remind myself, okay, uh, uh, who wrote this? Oh, the Apostle Paul, he wrote this. How did he suffer? Well, well when I do my research, he, he was in prison multiple times. Five times he was beaten with 40 lashes. Come on, y'all, that's pretty bad, huh? Three times he was beaten with rods. Uh, rocks were thrown at him. He was shipwrecked. He spent the night out at sea. Uh, and, and you know, I would hate that, hanging on to a log for his life or whatever. Uh, uh, he was ostracized for a time from the brethren. He was betrayed. He was beaten. The guy was left for dead on the side of the road, uh, but he didn't even look like he was alive. Uh, and this is a guy who said, our present sufferings uh, are not worth comparing uh, to the glory that is to come. So, 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 so I, I kind of get into that text and I let it feed my faith. Uh, our present sufferings are worth not, worth not comparing to the glory that is to come. So then I, I, I begin to ask me, and I'm asking you after I ask me, where are you hurting right now? Where, 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 where were you hurting right now? What have you lost that ha has you in your life in shambles? Where are you experiencing a hardship that deeply grieves your soul? M maybe you're facing a job loss or or shift in your income, that, that, that's suffering. So some of you are worried that you're sick. Some of you would be sick or have relatives that are sick. Some of you are literally battling diseases like cancer and, and such. Some of you have uh, relational challenges right now in your marriage or, or with your children. Maybe you've had a friend betray you. Whatever it is, what I do, I tell myself as I'm reading this, the scripture teaches me essentially, it's teaching me that the struggle I'm in today, listen, is producing the strength I need for tomorrow. And that's why he says this momentary trial. This, this momentary struggle is not even worth comparing to God's future blessing and the glory that will be revealed to us. Uh, I've got an unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our God. Good. So I starve my fears, but I feed my faith. See, I let God's word start to renew my mind because my life is always moving in the direction of my strongest thoughts. So, 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 so I read on. I, I get to Romans 8, 26, and I stop there. Paul says, in the same way, ah, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. I need what Paul says there because that's really, 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 really good news. It says in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. That, that's good news for me. And it'll be good news for you, for you if you just let it be good news. Because sometimes I feel incredibly incapable. 
She went, all this bad news. I said, man, how come this, this thing is weird? I, I, I feel sometimes unsure all of the time. How in the world do I successfully lead through all of this mess? How do I preach the right messages at the right time for the right spiritual response? I, I, I find myself sometimes second-guessing myself right and left. Don't feel prepared. I got, I got terminal degree, and I don't feel that I'm prepared to handle what's going on. And then I, I, and then I tell myself, because I'm, because I'm building up my faith, uh, God will never leave me. Uh, he will never forsake me. Uh, he, his Spirit helps me when I'm weak. Uh, and when I'm broken, uh, His Spirit, that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, uh, can dwell within me, and I feed my faith. So, so for those of you who are feeling weak, you, you, you're feeling overwhelmed, uh, you're feeling discouraged, uh, and, and you feel like you can't take it anymore. Somebody here needs to hear this. And some, some, some un illiterate Bible scholar, they'll say, yeah, every, every, you know, hey, people will tell you, well, you know, all this God talk... God helps those who help themselves. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says uh, God helps those who need help. Uh, he helps those who are weak. Uh, he helps those who are broken. He helps those uh, who cry out to him. Uh, he helps you when you're weak. Uh, God is our refuge and strength. Uh, a very present help in trouble. So, so if you're hurting right now, uh, he's your comfort. Uh, if you're confused, uh, he's your God. Uh, if you find yourself discouraged, uh, he is your hope. Uh, if you're anxious, praise God, he can be your peace. So I feed my faith. I starve my fears. Then I go on to Romans 8.28. Back to Romans 8.28, and I let it sink in. We know. In all things, in all things, in all things, in the good things and the bad things, in the days that I love and the days that I endure, through all the heartbreaks and all the income, all things, in all things, God works for the good. Of those who love him, who, who've been called according to his purpose. I, I, I want to testify that God is just that good. And he's just that involved. And, and, and whenever I need him, he's working it out. He, he's all up in the middle of the situation. He's going behind the scenes whenever our enemy means something for evil. Or whatever we are going through, our God is so great, he can still use it for our good. That, that's how good and faithful God is. Do I have a witness here today? You may not see him, but he's always there. He never leaves us. He's always good. He's always for you, and he's always with you. Somebody ought to say amen out there. And, and, and we may not like what we're going through, but, but I, I, I'm a testify today. I appreciate what God will produce out of this present pain. He's working all things. All things to bring about good. And I believe, I'm standing ten toes down. I, I, I believe by faith that God can do exceedingly and uh, abundantly more than all we ask or think uh, according to his power. And I'm believing that going through this, there are some of you, uh, you're going to come out on the other side and your marriage is going to be stronger. I, I believe I am optimistic that some of you, your families will be closer. I, I believe that your love is going to be deeper for one another. I, I believe that your generosity is going to become greater. Uh, and that there are Christians who are going to become bolder in their faith. Uh, and I believe that the light of the church of Capitol Hill will shine brighter. And that the harvest is going to be bigger because we lift up the name of Jesus. I'm optimistic.
music today in the goodness and the faithfulness of a, of a high and holy God. And, and so, I, so, I, so I feed my faith and I starve my fears. And I, I, I read, read in Romans 8, 38 and 39 when Paul says, he says, for I am convinced. And, and, and it's an unshakable assurance. He says, I'm convinced with everything in my soul. In other words, he said, I believe this to be true. He says, for I am convinced, completely convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our love. I'm feeding my faith. Uh, I tell myself no, way, no matter where I go, my God is there. Uh, no matter what I do, my God loves me. Uh, no matter what happens to me, my God is still for me. And that's why I have an, I'm beginning to have an unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future and our good. Because the truth of the matter is, we're all going to have our share of bad news. So let's acknowledge it. We're all going to face some challenges, some problems. But never forget, we have a bigger God. God is bigger than anything that we may face. We have a bigger God. I said we have a bigger God. I said we serve a God to whom all things are possible. So, so rather, yeah, yeah, rather than be consumed by fear and anxiety, you know what I'm going to do? I, I'm going to believe that our present struggles are not even worth comparing to the future of the glory, what God is going to do in us and through us. Whenever I'm discouraged and weak, I, I remind myself his spirit, his spirit is perfect. And in my weakness, his spirit is perfect. He, and he's working behind the scenes in all things to bring about something for my good. I may not see him, but, but he's still present in him, and he's still good. And even when our enemy means something for evil, our God can turn it around for our good because there's nothing, there's not a disease, not a sickness, not any fear that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so I know that what consumes my mind controls my life because because my life is always, almost always moving in the direction of my strongest thoughts. I, I've learned today that the life I have is a reflection of the thoughts I think. And the truth of the matter is, our God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So I starve my fears, and I feed my faith, and I lift up my hands and tell you, I, I, I am working on it. I'm getting there. I have an unwavering confidence that a very good, very involved, very loving God is working in every situation of my life right now to bring about future good, and it's all going to be done for his glory. I have a friend, grew up with him. Uh, it's my, bro my brother Baron, the one he's, he, he, the one you, you met who sings, and Baron is my best friend. This is Baron's best friend, and we're all a year apart. His name is Larry Holloway. His full name is Dr. Grant Lawrence Holloway, Jr., and, and Larry was quite an athlete when we grew up, and, and Larry went on to Loma Linda. He, he, <coughs> He, he became a dentist. He became a dentist. And, and so uh, last time I saw him, just a few months back, uh, <laughs> he's, he, he's awesome. He, he's awesome. Um, just a good man. And, and he, um, he, he watches us every week from the West Coast, every week. He calls me Big E, and he's always texting me, hey, Big E, you knocked that one out of the park. Ah, man. Uh, and, and, and Larry... Uh, <laughs> 
Last time I saw him, uh, he was kind of, you know, you know, uh, just, just kind of uh, having trouble walking. And he, he let me know. I said, how are your knees doing? He said, man, Biggie. He goes, Biggie. He goes, man, I've had my seventh surgery on my knees. He said, man, I'm in pain every single day. He said, but the good thing is, he said, I'm still moving. I mean, you're not going to find a more positive man than Grant Lawrence Holloway Jr., my friend Larry, uh, my brother Barron's best friend, Larry Holloway. And, 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 and things could be falling all around him. I'm talking about tragedy and because, because of his knees, he had to stop being a dentist uh, for a while because he just couldn't stand for a long time. But, but, but whenever he faced challenges, he might say a little bit about the challenge, but he always looked at the bright side. But the good thing is, but the good thing is, and, and me and my brother, my, we're always te teasing, you know, just like Larry says. But the good thing is, and let me tell you, saints, these past couple of months, they, they, they've been hellish for me. hard to look at the positive. Several things took place, and me and Brenda, and Brenda's not feeling well, and, you know, she's had these pounding headaches, and just not herself. She pushes through. She has a high-impact job, and, and, and I, I saw, I saw, I saw Brenda just struggling, not feeling well. I was, last week I was um, at workers' meeting with the rest of the pastors and up in Pine Forge. I received an urgent call. And Brenda was not, not doing well at all. And so she tried to reach me. I was in the shower. And, and so she reached out to Danielle Pierre. If you don't know Danielle, those of you who have been around, she's been here for years, wife of Josh, our first elder, and she's a nurse, and she's a, a great, they're great friends of our family, and, and, she, and, and Brenda just finished the prayer line, and she could barely get her, her thoughts out, and she began to have spinning dizziness, and just, just not well at all, and Danielle gets there, she looks, takes one look at Brenda. Her, her blood, her, her, her blood um, pressure had dropped to 80 over 40. She, she was just barely hanging in there because Danielle, um, she works at the triage of Holy Cross Hospital. She, she immediately knew that she had to get an ambulance. And, and so she called 911. An ambulance was dispatched and the EMT, and so because Danielle was on her way, she had on her uniform, and she said, can you, can you just do me a favor? Can, can you just take this ambulance to my hospital? What's your hospital? Holy Cross. Can you just do it for me? After a few minutes, they worked it out. Very unusual. She needed to get in the ambulance, but the good thing was she had an intercessor. She had an advocate, and she got there. She got there. I rush down, take that three hour. Mine everywhere because I I didn't know what's going on. Literally. And because 
Daniel worked there, worked in triage. When, when the ambulance arrived with my prize, they took her right in. They began to take every test. And by the time I got there, my daughter Alicia, her boyfriend Howard was there. Mama, Papa Brown was there. Bronson, their son, was there. Gina was there. Gina Brown was there. We all were gathering and and they're taking test after test after test, and we're rotating, seeing, and, and we're praying, and it came back with some bad news. Brenda, my wife, developed, had developed a tumor. in her brain. That's bad news, y'all. Brenda has a tumor in her brain. But the good news is it's operable. Yes, bad news. Yes, bad news. She has a tumor in her brain. That, that thing pressing her on her brain causing her headaches. But the good news, God is still on the throne. And God beginning to work behind the scenes. And, and it happened just about 10 days ago, but... but but this week, we were blessed to talk to one neurologist and three high-rated neurosurgeons in the span of five days. And they prioritized their schedules to give their opinions. And they all came to the conclusion, take it out. The good news is operable. It's, it's, it's going to be tough. It's, 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 when it happens, it's going to be four or five hour surgery to remove the tumor before it can grow and create firm, further complications. It's been one hell of a week. But, but the good thing is, and, and me and Brenda, we, we, when, when this thing started happening, we said we're going to have to do the Larry thing. But the good, let's see the good in everything. And, then the, and see, see, the good thing is... We literally, Brenda, we have seen God show up through people every day for the last nine days. I mean, I mean, mom, mom, and papa was there. Their son, Bronson, was there. And they're, they're family to us. They came to the hospital. And last week, they, they, they brought over a meal, cooked food, and stayed with Brenda while I struggled last week hosting the seven last words. We've, we've seen God work this week. Uh, Sister Betty Mitchell brought food. Sister Kennedy sent some flowers and a card. Uh, Dr. Gina Brown brought food a couple of times. Uh, has been a steady presence. Uh, Tony and India, Dr. India Medley uh, came by to review the, the documents, stuff that we don't know about, uh, showing their love by their coming. Uh, Elder Austins uh, and her team keeps on loving us and praying for us. Uh, pastors kept on serving. Uh, the good thing was was. Uh, she had her girlfriends coming over, bringing flowers and brought dessert uh, and visiting. And Elder Johari yesterday uh, sent out a beautiful card because the good thing is uh, we still have the presence of God. Uh,
Yes, a tumor is on the brain, but the bad news is, the, 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 that's the bad news, but the good news, I want to stand fast, is that God is Jehovah Rapha. He's a healer. And we believe that after being tried and after we go through the season of surgery uh, over the next several weeks, uh, we believe that God will bring her forth uh, like pure gold. And Brenda is going to turn this test into a testimony and everything is going to be all right. Yes, that's the good news. But let me even tell you some better news. The gospel is even better news. The gospel means good news. And that's the best news ever. See, see, the bad news is, that, and there's a lot of bad news. The bad news is that we've all messed up. And if you look at your life, and if you're really honest, you probably say that there's a lot of things that you've done wrong, that you're embarrassed about, that you feel bad about, that you feel guilty for. And the reason is, is because we've fallen short of the glory of God. We've fallen short of the standards of God. Now, Scripture calls that sin. And the Bible is really clear that all of us have sinned. We're all guilty. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. And God is a perfect standard. But the good news is this, that our God loves us even though we sinned. He offers his forgiveness. And if we confess our sins, ah, that's good news, y'all. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and then, then clean, to cleanse us. From all unrighteousness. In other words, the way you and I are made right with God is not based on the day we keep, not based on our religious efforts, and not by you stop doing bad things and start doing good things. The way, thank you, the way you and I are made right with God is by placing our faith in the perfect works of Jesus, the risen Son of God. And when you call on that name, if you call on that name that is above every name, if you call on the name of Jesus, God hears your prayers and he forgives your sins. And, and, and you know what? When he forgives us, it's as if you've never ever sinned and you become brand new. You, 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 you literally become made right with God. So the bad news is, all have sinned. But the good news is, the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and, and when we get there, imagine what we think. See, get, get off of CNN and, and, and begin to imagine heaven. And when we get there, there there's going to be no more bad news. There, there's no more pain. There's no more sin. There's no more confusion. No more heartache. No more cancer. No more crime. No more dissension. No more tumors. Uh, no more racism. No more sexism. No more tears. No more bad news. And that's the day where God will receive us all. Everybody standing. I'm calling, oh, I'm calling, say, your Savior, why don't you hear my heart? One more time, Savior, Savior, I'm crying,
everybody praying. Uh, Father, we would not end this message without giving somebody an opportunity to respond to the good news. The good news is that you died for our sin. The good news that your blood still works. The good news that you can and will make a way out of no way. And so, Lord, we, we learn through your word that we have to starve our fears, but feed our faith. And so today, our faith now has been strengthened through your word. But there's somebody here, there's somebody here who wants to be in that number of the saved whose blood has been washed in the blood. Their sins have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's somebody here who, who wants to turn their life over and stop being fearful and start being faithful. And so, as we get ready to approach our, our communion table, there, there's somebody who needs to say yes and receive strength and healing and wholeness today. And if it's your, your decision to think on these things, and to respond to what God is putting in your mind right now. I'm going to ask if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, or you want to come back home, or you want to unite with the church, I'm going to ask very quickly that you put your hand up, and God will see, heaven will see. You want today to be your day. You want your day to be this day. Just put your hand way over there. We see this hand right here, my brother. Right here. My sister in the back. There's two hands right there. Somebody else. And we're going to just slip you a card. Raphael's going to slip you a card. This brother here. This sister in the back. Put your hand back up. Somebody else. Some young person, some child. We don't want to overlook. This is your time. This is your season. Don't you leave this house without your calling and election sure. You don't know what the day is going to hold. But today, that's the good news. If you hear God's voice, don't you harden your heart. Somebody else, just another 30 seconds. Don't, 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 don't let this be a, an opportunity that slips you by. Somebody else. There's one right here. Here's one right here. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. That's all right. Somebody else. All right. I don't want to prolong it, but I don't want not to give you that opportunity. Balcony, somebody else. Somebody else. By his stripes, we are healed. As I pray, thank you, God, for the ones that have responded. Thank you, Lord, for the, the ability of even during a service such as this, you can still win people to your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for the ones who have made their decisions to turn their lives around. Let it be a renewal in their thoughts, in their minds, and in their decisions. So we praise you in advance for how you're going to use them for your glory. Thank you, Lord, because you're an awesome God. In Jesus' name, if you love them today, and we know that the good thing is we still have a God who cares. Let's put our hands together again. You may be seated. I'm crying, say, you're hey.
Hello, Capitol Hill Church. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And this is from the NIV version. For I received from the Lord that I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our kind and gracious Father in heaven, we come this day giving you thanks, honor, and praise for you alone are worthy. We thank you for this word that reminds us of just how good you are. And so today we come humbly but gratefully to this communion table. Lord, we thank you for the emblems that are here that remind us of the great sacrifice you made for us. And so, Lord, we pray that as we partake of this bread, we pray that it will remind us of your body that was broken and bruised for our sins. Lord, we ask that as we partake of this cup, we pray that you will remind us again of your blood that was spilt for each and every one of us, Lord, because of your great love. And so, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for this opportunity once again to partake in this service in remembrance of you. So bless us today as we commune together. And again, we say thank you. We love you. We honor you for your great sacrifice and your glorious mercy and grace toward us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. 
pastoral staff, officers and members, and friends of Capitol Hill, it is an honor for Zira and I to be back home. <laughs> and we bring our church so that they can see a real communion, what God has done for you throughout the years. Today, I just want to give an opportunity and share with you what I've been asked to do. Significance of communion. What is the significance of communion? Communion is not an obligation, but it is a celebration. Communion is a celebration of what God has done for us since the last time we came to the table. Oh, how many more weeks it has been, maybe 13, 14, 15 weeks. But within those weeks, we have found ourselves plummeting, always going down at times. But there is a God. There is a God that has opened up the full fountain for us of blood of Jesus Christ. So we come so that we may be fixed by him. Because the bread symbolizes his body and the wine symbolizes his blood. But this is not the only reason why we celebrate communion. We also celebrate it for having a relationship with God. Oh, I can come every 13 weeks. I can come every once in a while. Some churches do it every first Sunday. Uh, but what is the difference if my heart is not made right? What is the, the difference if I am not changed by the blood of Jesus Christ? Celebrating communion marks the story of Jesus how he gave himself completely to give us a better life. Oh, we struggle every day thinking that we have the best of life, but we don't have it unless we have Jesus. The best of life comes from Jesus. And when we find that we have the best of life in Christ, we know that we are good. For I have received from the Lord. What I also passed on to you, says Jesus, the Lord Jesus on this same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is now the new covenant of my blood. Do this, do this, do this. Do this in remembrance. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You proclaim not only his death, but you proclaim his life. Now, I shouldn't say this, Pastor, but I'm going to say it anyway. Ah, we meat eaters, or those who you know who eat meat, there are times that they get a steak and there's still what? Blood in it. And when you eat that steak, you eat that animal, you eat that what? You eat that blood that came from that animal, right? And if you eat that blood along with that steak, whatever that bull felt like when he died, it's in you. If it was a happy bull, bless you. <laughs> but if it was an angry bull, you've seen your friends. You know how they look. You know how they act. But the blood is the life source. So when we drink the grape juice, we're not just drinking grape juice. We are, this grape juice symbolizes Christ's blood within us. When we can go day in and day out knowing 
when we have the blood of Christ within us, there is nothing we can't do. The bread representing his body, where he himself gave. He told us, I laid down my life, and I will take it back up. Ah, they did all they could do, but they couldn't take my life, and they can't give it back to me. So Jesus says, when you take this communion, remember, remember me. Remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Remember what he did for you. Remember what he did for you this week as you reflected on the last time you took communion. Remember, he has brought you through a mighty case. He's brought you through mighty waters. He's brought you through some fire. He's brought you through some floods. He's brought you through some situations in life that if it was left to you, all would be lost. But, but, by the grace of God, but by the blood of Jesus, when we have the chance to plunge beneath that blood, we come out clean, whiter than snow. And in closing, John 3.16 has been one of my favorite texts of the Bible. You know it. Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave that whosoever should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. You know it by that, but now I'm going to break it down exegesis for you. And it says, for God, that's the greatest lover. So love, that's the greatest degree. The world, that's the greatest company that needed love. That he gave, that's the greatest action. His only begotten son, that's the greatest gift. That whomsoever... That's the greatest opportunity for us all. Who believe it, that's the greatest simplicity. In him, that's the greatest attraction. Should not perish, that's the greatest assurance. But, but, when you see but, you know there's going to be a change. That's the greatest difference. Have. That's the greatest promise. Everlasting life, that's the greatest blessing of it all. Everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life in Christ. When we come to the table each and every time, we have that opportunity to have everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 When I was a little boy, growing, at, growing up in DuPont Park Church and school, my father was a deacon. My mother was a deaconess. That's why communion is so special to me. I used to see them and go with them to the church. That's when they used to make the bread themselves back in the day. The deaconesses would be down there, Sister Stewart. And they had the rolling pins. And they beat that bread. And when it was done, my mama used to slip me a couple of pieces. <laughs> and I watched my dad, a deacon for 50 years at DuPont Park before he went to sleep in Jesus. My mother, deaconess at DuPont Park for 50 years, both serving the Lord, doing what God wanted them to do. And I look and I see being able to look in my life knowing that this couple adopted me when I was two years old. Where would I have been 
what in God's name would I have been doing? But God saw fit because of his everlasting blood that I was not only adopted in their family, but when we take communion, we are readopted into Jesus' family. We have this great hope that soon and very soon, he's coming back. He's coming back. So as we look toward the table today, as we come to the table, know you this, Capitol Hill and Faith Church, know you this, that he who does the great work in you, he will never fail. He who started that great work, he will finish it. He who laid his life down for us, he's coming back. Ah, they go to that tomb and they run every Easter to look in. They don't see anybody because he has risen. He has risen. He has risen. And soon and very soon, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. So stay faithful, church. Stay faithful, Capitol Hill. Stay faithful, faith, church. Stay faithful, family. Wherever you may be in your life right now, know that not only for today, but always you can plunge beneath that blood. That full fountain, oh, that full fountain that will never dry up. That full fountain that will always stay full. And soon we'll hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hey, 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 you've been faithful over a few things. Now come, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord, because he has risen.
want to make sure that if there's anyone in the general audience that was overlooked, we want to make sure that you are served. So if there's anyone that has been overlooked, please raise your hand so we can give you an emblem before we continue.
in front of you is the symbol of our Savior's sacrifice, the blood and the bread. At the bottom is the bread, and as we unpeel it and take out the bread, the promise is that by eating, we symbolize that we are a part of the body of Christ. So take and eat all of it. And on top, you'll find the cover for the juice that represents the blood that was shed for you and me. And the Lord said, take and drink all of it. Mm. I let the church say, amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. His name is so sweet. How many believe his name is so sweet? <laughs> Yesterday from Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and even some parts of D.C., our earth was shook. But the word of God that was preached today stirred us. Because this word is forevermore for our benefit, for we know all things work together. Now the earth that shook, it felt like a big train that went under the earth and just rolled right through. They didn't know what to think of it at first. But I started to think about, God, you are definitely speaking to this world. Matter of fact, God probably shook some people into church today. If we think he's not speaking, he has let us know that he is. And I've come to remind you today in collaboration with Dr. Peeler that our God is still in charge. He hears us in the midst of our weakness, and he is our strength. For we know that all things work together for the good, them who are in Christ Jesus. Can we just praise God for the word today manifested? And we stand in one accord and praying for our first lady, holding her up as God's blessing upon her always. Amen. Pastor, I just want to thank you for that message today in, in all things that God is working for our good. I've shared with you uh, my day job is uh, working with preschool teachers and the preschoolers. Best job I've ever had in my entire life. Because when you go in, you learn something new every day, not from the teachers, but from those three and four year olds every single day. Not long ago, I was working with, with one of the little ones and he had completed the task that his teacher had asked him to do, and I, not following the training that I know I'm supposed to do, I said, oh, that was good. You did a good job. Instead of telling him specifically what he had done especially well, he looked at me and he said, I know. My father told me that I am good in everything, he said. Four years old four years old and so when you were preaching today pastor I remembered that message from the four-year-old when your father tells you that you are good you better believe you are good in every aspect because he 
is good. So we thank you today, Pastor, for that reminder that God is good. And because he is good, we're going to be all right. God bless you. Some time ago, uh, Pastor Peeler, you uh, gave a sermon. You talked about Isaiah 6. And I remember as I listened to you, you talked about the angels giving God glory in his presence. Holy, holy, holy. And in my young experience at that time, I thought about that, reflected upon it. I said, I'm in heaven, and I'm saying, holy, holy, holy. That would be boring. That would be boring to me, I thought. I would be in God's presence. But then I thought about it at a later time, and I thought about God's goodness. I thought about God's blessings to me on a daily basis. And I reflected from the time I was a child until the present at that time. And I started saying, holy, holy, holy. And I couldn't stop praising God. Communion is about reminding us, holy, holy, holy. We will never stop praising him. Doc, um, as you were preaching, you talked about optimism. And um, I've always been asked the question, why do you smile so much? Uh, why are you so happy? Um, and as I was reflecting on what Elder Hodges was saying is, I've always been taught that Jesus loves me. And I've always been taught that all things work out for the good of those that have been chosen by the Lord. And, and I never brought it to my consciousness, Doc, but my, my, my subconsciousness has, has always told me that, that God will take care of me. And as I go through communion, and, and, and even though I, I, I might go to church and I might extend a little bit longer than I planned for, I know that at the end of the day, I spend time in the presence of a God that loves me, yes, sir. That, takes care of, that takes care of me. And then when I close my eyes, he dies so that I can see him. Amen. So that's what I reflect on today in communion. Amen. 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 At this time, for the giving, uh, here you go. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, church. Um, we witnessed and heard one of the greatest sermons on being optimistic. Uh, it's unfortunate that any time we talk about giving, you seem pessimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to do is just give you a few reasons why you should be optimistic. First of all, your giving helps us to serve. It helps to grow. It helps to connect. It helps us to worship. That's what your giving does. We're able to be in this building and serve over 33 different ministries without any financial strain. That is because of your giving. I want you to know that the Lord is coming soon. And many of us think that the Lord is waiting, where should, we should be waiting on the Lord. But the Lord is actually waiting on us. He's waiting on us because he said, until everyone knows about his word, then he will come. So I want us to realize that our giving is important to finish God's work. Paul says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time for us to wake out of our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. We are reminded of this each and every day. When we get in our cars and we look at the side view mirror and it says, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. So I'm gonna ask the AV team to put on the screen different ways that you can give through Venmo, through Zelle, um, you can go through Realm. You can give the old-fashioned way by uh, giving in the buckets at the back of the church. 
and you can also mail it in. So let us get busy doing God's word and let us stay optimistic. Let us bow our heads at this time. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done. We thank you, dear Lord, for the profound sermon that was presented today. We thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us, dear Lord, to be responsible, dear Lord, for the duties that we have as Christians to share your word. We pause to give you praise, dear Lord, and pray that the funds that we receive through our tithe and offering, dear Lord, will go to do your work. In your son's holy name we do pray. Let God's people say, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Colin. And remember, we have a benevolent fund that helps so many people uh, throughout our uh, congregation and beyond. And so um, if you have a, uh, you can put it in one of those uh, uh, items on ways to give, or we're going to have, uh, as you leave, buckets if you want to give the old-fashioned way for our benevolent fund. And it, that's to help those who need uh, in those times of need. Um, it's been a blessed time to be in, in God's house, and I just want to give God the glory for his presence through his spirit. I praise God for the elders of this house. They did a fantastic job. Can we give God the glory for our elders on behalf of Josh? Come on, we could do better than that. That's our elders. Those are elders, Freddie. See, Freddie, I like Freddie. See, you clap your own self. Come on and say, hey, no, praise God. We need it. And our deacons and deaconess, didn't they do a fabulous job? Deacons under the, the, the mighty hand of uh, Robin, who just lost his brother, getting ready to travel down there. We're going to be praying for you. And uh, on our birthday, young lady, we praise God for our leadership, uh, for our deaconess. Thank you for your excellence. You, uh, listen, your, your, your handprints are on everything because of your excellence, and we appreciate the entire Deaconess crew. We praise God for the Faith Church that has joined us, members of the Faith Choice, along with Pastor Michael Cox, the volunteer lay pastor. Come on and say amen out there. Thank you so much. We're grateful for our AV team, our praise team. And, and uh, Kim, we, we just celebrated our hymns today, and it was a uh, mighty, and we're getting prepared for our last hymn as everybody stands when we all get to heaven. But, but here it is. Here it is. We're, we're going to praise God for uh, Lloyd Mallory. You played every instrument and made up some today. Come on and say amen out there. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you for that. And Brenda, she, listen, she's a church girl. Brenda hates missing church. When you see her, she does not have all of the energy, but pray for her. Love her. Continue to just, just, just to text her. That's my girl. If you stress out my girl, you're stressing me out. And, <laughs> and I will no longer be optimistic. Come on and say amen out there. I'll be the... All right. Can you pray for her? Come on. Can, 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 can you reach out your hand right now? And uh, uh, I wonder the pastors pray for her right now. Pastor Wesley, pray for her. We thank you because you have gloried over her with your healing power, O oh God. We thank you when the devil tried to take her out, you kept her up, O oh Father. And by the blood of Jesus, we claim her now yes. in your presence for yes. complete healing, O oh God. Yes. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Father, we're praying that you would touch her. Be the balm and Gilead in her life right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Surround her with love, courage, and power. Bless her courage. Lift her up. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Thank you. And for you, the guests who have come today, you're not visitors, but you're guests. We expected you. And thank you for uh, choosing Capitol Hill. You could choose anywhere, uh, anywhere with a parking lot. Come on and say amen. <laughs> but, but, but you chose to come downtown and be a blessing to us. We love you. We appreciate you. If you need a church home, we'll be glad to be a part of your church family. Everybody standing when we all get to heaven. Friend? Oh, oh, one more thing. Uh, thanks, friend. Uh, we have so many people who have accomplished so many things, and it's right here in my note. 
I got a lot on my mind. But I want you to know, last week, we had a gentleman from our church who uh, received one of the highest awards of service of, uh, from Oakwood University last week at Alumni Weekend. It's none other than our safety officer and our assistant head deacon. I'm talking about the, the awesome Mark Washington. He was blessed. Come on, come on, come on. We celebrate here. We affirm. Come on, we affirm. He, he does so much for so many in the community, in the church, on your job. You represent us, and we love you. Thank God for you, Elder Mark. So when you see Mark today, give him a big hug, holy hug. Come on and say amen out there. Give him a big hug, and thank you for all of what you do. Praise God. When we all get to heaven, come on, Kim. 